Welcome back to the LTM podcast powered by Slipstream Autosports. We're your hosts, Daniel and Alex, and welcome to our Topor Weekend Preview. This is the ITM Topor Super 400, I believe. Um, Alex, how are you, how are you going this evening? Yeah, not bad, mate. Not bad. Keen for a very big week end of motorsport. It's going to be a massive week, especially for you. Uh, we'll get into that. Live end on TV, on. yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Supercars is finally back. Round three after a month of waiting. Um, it's ridiculous, but it is what it is. Uh, but for the first time in a long time, Supercars are going to New Zealand once again, mm. uh, this time to a brand new track that they've never been to before with Topor. Um, you excited for it? At least, they have an, at least they have an excuse now to have a month off. You know, they've got to ship all the cars and all the yeah. transporters and all that stuff. So I don't mind waiting a month for this round. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a good but, point. Uh, yeah, very exci- it's very exciting um, having New Zealand back on the calendar. And a new track and new everything. Who the heck knows what's going to happen? That's it. That's the be- best part about it um, is the fact that no one has been on the track in those cars before. Um, no. So it's going to be cool. And nice transition to some news before we get into the track details. Brody Kistecki, the 2023 champion, is back racing in the, with Erebus out of all, out of all the things. Um, and for reference... Cheeky plug, if you haven't seen our the video I did earlier this week, earlier last week, sorry, that um, regarding Brody Kostecki, um, be sure to check that out as well. Uh, the link will be in the description. But uh, Alex, pff, I was not expecting that. Um, no. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. look, they did say that you know he, he was going to hopefully come back, but they just didn't know when. And um, it's happened. Um, and I think... It's it's good that it's happened. You know, there'll be a lot of media coverage about it this weekend, I'm sure. But after this, everyone can just go back to normal. And it's yeah. good, it's healthy. And, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing how he does. And finally, since I think we said 20, oh, was it 15, 16, the number one car is back on the grid? It's been a, it's been a long time. 18, I reckon. 18 was the last time. We saw the number one because, um, mm. oh, technically um, we Scott, saw. Yeah, because Scott, because yeah. uh, Jamie won the championship in twenty seventeen, didn't he? Yeah, remember that whole Newcastle yeah, debacle? So he, yeah, I remember it very well. <laughs> yeah, I thought you would. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, well. but technically, um, Giz, yeah, Gisbergen so had a while. Yeah, Gizzy had number one Adelaide five hundred a couple of years back. Although that I won't, I don't really count that as a whole year sort of thing. That's what I'm more yeah. referring to. But yeah. it's great to see the number one. It's great to see Brody back in the carts where he belongs on in a race car on a race track. However, the way things have handled to get him to that moment is appalling. And uh, just a quick brief overview, basically. Um, he, oh, it's, you see, it's very unclear. So we have to be careful here. Um, take everything with a grain of salt. But apparently, according to some article, uh, Erebus actually sent a legal threat um, threatening Kostecki with a sue um, after all the drama that happened at the beginning of the year when uh, Kostecki left. Um, Of course, all the sponsors left as well, which um, Er so Erebus suffered a significant amount of loss. Um, So basically, Erebus sent a threat to Kostecki's lawyer. because of that loss that they experienced. So that was appalling. And my theory here, from the sounds of all the evidence, is Brody was told to either deal with the Sioux or race for them until the end of his contract, which is end of this year. Um, so it's pretty nasty. And on top of that, sorry, I'm not, I know I'm not letting you talk, Alex. So give me one second. Oh, it's, it's, it's all a mess, man. <laughs> it is a real mess. Um, Peter Adderton said on socials, which he actually ended up deleting on Instagram, funny enough. Um, he got a phone call from Brody Kostecki that morning saying that he has to drop him as a sponsor. So apparently, not only Erebus threat Kostecki, but also he was told he had to get rid of all his personal sponsors in order to race for the team. So that is just poof, a mess. It is a real mess. And he had a just this plain old black carbon fiber helmet during his Winton test day. 
um, the other week, so uh, last week. So, and I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if that's the same this weekend. Oh yeah, no, definitely. And on top of that as well, um, regarding sponsors, the TFH sponsor that is currently on the car, I think according to someone who mentioned on the live, uh, they have a three race deal. So this weekend will probably be the last weekend we'll see TFH. Uh, see how we go because of course, Todd Hazel would help bring that sponsor to the team. And unfortunately, yeah. he's been booted for Kostecki. Um, Look, one so, thing Todd Hazelwood has always been good at is getting sponsors. Oh, yeah. He's a real team player, so he's a fantastic um, bloke with sponsors and stuff. Yeah, well, I, I know a little bit of uh, like background from when he was in Super 2 and stuff, so a family member of mine knows his family. Mm. And I found out that he's just a, like on the off days, he's just a workaholic. Oh, yeah, to, I remember... You know, try to fund everything, you know, yeah. everything he'd done, like him and his family genuinely did themselves. It is an incredible thing what, he, what he's, he's achieved, especially at this day and age. And um, still going, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he's not bad at it either. Um, no. He's doing well in the Trans Am series. But uh, unfortunately, he's gone. Um, I, I wish we could have seen, it, seen him in that seat all year, but... It is what it is. We all knew that as the moment Kostecki was going to come back, um, Todd would have instantly been gone. But he'll be back for the Enduros. Yeah. But uh, that leads on to the next part of the Erebus thing. Um, Erebus have suffered even more losses with David Russell um, leaving the team in favour for Premier Hire Racing. Uh, David Russell will be racing with James Golding for the Enduros, which will be a fantastic Opportunity for Premier Rice, Premier 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 Higher Racing, um, especially with Ludo being the engineer. And just a thought: isn't he also sponsored by Boost? Honestly, I don't know because Peter has said that he's um, quitting all mot motorsport sponsorship. But I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, but I don't um, know if that's but maybe true that's or not another for him. reason why he can't. Maybe that's another reason why he can't race. Because he's been with Brody for years and been very successful, so it'd be mm. very. That has to, there should has to be another reason. Should has and there'd be a slash there. <laughs> should or has to have yeah. a reason as to why he's not with him all of a sudden. So yeah, it is really interesting. Yeah, um, and I on think, top of I that, reckon there'd be a link there somewhere that the media oh. said or get it. Well, that's the thing. It is hard, though. Um, not a lot is being said about anything regarding Erebus in full stop. Um, oh. Like, I, I keep saying, so much has been said, but very, 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 very little has been said by Erebus from the source, um, which is annoying. Yeah, but I wouldn't really be surprised if they do another one of those deep and meaningful interviews that I did at Bathurst with Barry and um, Betty. Yeah, I don't know how deep and meaningful that actually was. Yeah, I, I've it's hard to talk about. I've been fairly honest about how I felt to, uh, during that interview. Like, I didn't think it was, it, it didn't really justify anything, I and mean, it didn't really actually shed a light on anything either. Um, but yeah, hopefully, no, hopefully as the year goes on, like it just was a bit of like kind of feel sorry for them. And it worked on me, so I was, like, really not upset, but, like, I was, like, wow, it's mm. genuinely messed up and um, we still don't really know the cause of it at all. But, um, look, that's what I'm hoping this weekend kind of brings. Like, it's it's done, have a bit more media on it, clear everything up, and come round four. Where's round four again? Uh, Perth. Cool. By Perth, done and dusted, we're racing. Which is Kostecki's home track, so... Even better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we've still got a month to wait after that anyway. But, yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's going to be interesting for sure. We'll see what happens. But hopefully, yeah, like you said, once Brody is doing, hopefully doing well, which I'm sure he probably will, um, you know, hopefully even just forget about it for now and just focus on racing uh, until yeah. something else happens. Yeah. But uh, in <laughs> saying that, though, I'm not sure if Brody will stay for the team till the end. Like, he might leave at the end of the year, I reckon, once his contract is up. But we'll have to see how he goes. I going. wouldn't be surprised. Um, wouldn't yeah. be surprised. I reckon he'll... Uh, he might even head overseas. You reckon? Yeah. It's another... That's a Because um, Cam Borders might do that too, although nothing has been said. But 
Of course, he'll be having a, another stint in the truck series in between Topor and Perth. So, um, yeah, right. Well, to be fair, he didn't really get that much of a shot. No, but he he got caught up in an accident and his car literally was a train, <laughs> a steam train. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've never seen a car do that in my life. That was crazy. Um, it was just like an eruption of smoke. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and then they're still but, told him to bring it back to the pits. Yeah. <laughs> But nah, besides, besides from that, though, he did really well. Uh, he, he actually impressed a couple of people. I think Brody would fit in with uh, NASCAR. Just oh, with sure. the, the physicality of it. Mm. He's, he's a, you know, old, old school kind of guy. And, yeah, he, and he battled with Shane for years. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, but uh, let's get into a bit more lighthearted news now. We'll get away from all that controversy for now for another day and let that simmer. But uh, Pit Tech, mm-hmm. Pit Stop Challenge, that begins in Topor. Of course, um, BJR have been pretty decent at it all since its beginning. Um, so that's one thing they can do well, hopefully. Yeah, I was going to say, they have their eyes on the prize. Yeah, that's it. Uh, also, I think though, it's a bit unfair that they're so good because they do the most pit stops. Fair enough. That's a good, uh, valid point. <laughs> uh, you're not wrong there. Uh, and now Triple Eight have announced their wildcard entry or revealed their livery for the year. Looks very nice. It might be on the screen here. I'm not sure. Um, who has a bit more yellow than last previous years. Looks quite nice. Of course, Lowndes and will be teaming up with Cooper Murray for the year. Uh, Cooper Murray is also going to be racing in Darwin on his own, similar to Zane Goddard last year. Uh, I'm excited to see what he does um, in Darwin, um, it's his first time in the main game, which is going to be cool. They've also announced their 2025 program as well. Craig Lowndes will be teaming up with another young gun, so it won't be Cooper Murray; it'll be someone, someone else. So I'm curious to see uh, who I that like will that. be. I do like it. It's I quite like it. every year. There's a new kid that's going to yeah. work with Craig Lowndes. Like it's it's really cool. It's like the mentor role sort of thing. That's what they're describing it as, and it really is that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And uh, I don't really know who it could. B. No, I'm not sure. Um, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. I would love um see the Job Stewart because he I was gonna he, mention him. Although he is part of Erebus. Yeah. So he might end up getting a co drive next year anyway. But maybe yeah. um Have they done a round yet? Oh, they yeah, yeah, round one. They've only done one. Right. They're doing in Perth they will have another round. Um Jesus. Yeah, I mean, it's even long, it's even longer. Yeah, but uh, oh, ma- it could even be Bates. Maybe I know he's part of Walkinshaw, but he might be able to do something there. Um, and or Cam McLeod, that'd be cool. Yeah, see how he goes first, mm. see, or even maybe Nash might. Yeah, maybe. Although, yeah, maybe Nash is um, off topic, but he's killing it in Transams. Yeah, he's doing really well. I mean, he's only won five in a row, apparently. Mm. Yeah. He he's definitely he takes after his dad. That's for sure. Is he in the Porsche Cup series? Isn't he in the Porsche as, as well? I can't remember. He's, if no, he's, he's in, no, he's in Carrera Cup. He's racing Scott Taylor's car, and they're racing this weekend. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they'll be uh, at Topol. Yeah, there you go. I forgot about that. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, that's what happens when there's a month in between races. Um, yeah. Next up, another wild card entry. Um, Matt Charter is coming back to the main game in the Gen Three car this time around. Uh, he'll be racing, uh, or his squad will be racing at Sandown and Bathurst this year. They haven't announced who will be co-driving with him yet. I'm sure they'll be later on, but it's going to be another young gun. Um, so it's great to see, you know, other people, other young guns like fast up and comers having an, uh, get, getting a crack because there's. Um, Jay Robotham. That's right. Yeah. So, um, and in terms of him driving Super Two that weekend, hasn't been determined whether he will do it or not. Um, see what happens. But I'm I'm glad to see a, a privateer team take it up with the big boys. If you call it yeah, that. it's just and Matt Tyler's been in Super Two forever. He deserves a shot. He he. <laughs> Uh, does he? Has he won like races? I don't know. He he has been very close to winning. Um, he got a penalty one time, but he what he finished, he crossed the line first, but he got a penalty unfortunately. 
Um, mm. hey, but he has been, he has been in Super Two for a decade, not, uh, not literally, but it feels like probably is to be honest. I don't know, but it has been a long time for sure. So, but it's great to see them them um, going because I, I think they finished eighteenth uh, in twenty twenty two, which is a good effort for Privateer. Um, so curious to see how they go because they might it hasn't been determined yet, but they might either run a Triple Eight chassis or a Brad Jones car. Um, nothing's been confirmed yet, so we'll see how we go later in the year. Of course, that's still ages away, um, but it will come quick. Uh, next up, we've got three new liveries for the weekend. We've got Penrite Boys rocking a Kiwi livery, which looks very nice. Of course, we've got uh, it's technically the Kiwi team of supercars, even though some people on TikTok have said otherwise. But um, I say it's the Kiwi team because it's the two drivers are both Kiwi. And the team's owned by Kiwis. Apparently they're in Australia. What? Yeah, I don't the know. The growth. The... <laughs> All right. I don't know. Just go with it. But regardless, we can defend ourselves with the TikTok Kiwi drivers. <laughs> yeah. Um. By the way, follow our TikTok if you are interested in that. That's where we keep up to date with all the news and stuff of V8s and F1 and whatnot. Cheeky plug. Had to do it. Um. Yeah. So yeah. The. The Kiwi boys of rocking Kiwi livery. I'm excited to see what they do this weekend. Uh, we've also got Cameron Hill. He's traded traded the blue for the black. Um, for uh, he's got rid of tire power for super glass for the weekend. Looks very nice. And uh, Macaulay Jones got rid of the Sponge Rob livery in favour for Wendy's. Um, similar they to cannot make NASCAR. a good looking car, man. <laughs> Far out. He's just traded yellow for light blue. I didn't hate it. It's just. Well, also, Wendy's must be in New Zealand. It's not in Australia. Must be, yeah. So, Although it should be in Australia. I'm like, I'm like, who the heck are they going to promote that to? But it must be New Zealand. Yeah, probably. But it should be Any Australia. Any reason. Like, they have it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it for that. And uh, we've got Aussie Grand Prix. Um, next year will be the Formula 1 season opener. I know that's F1 and whatnot, but... Uh, it's locked in for fourteenth to the sixteenth of March, I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. No, four thirteen to the something like that. But uh, in terms of what that means for supercars, from because from the sounds of it, it looks like they're staying um, with the Grand Prix, which is good. Um, but in terms of what round that would be, I, I reckon it'll probably be like a round two again, or hopefully a round three. Hopefully, we have a bit more races. Like less gaps in between races. Uh, but... Yeah, it'll probably, yeah, probably round two, mm. I would say. Because if they want to do the Bathurst thing again, which I kind of hope they don't, but if they do that again, then they'd link it with a 12 hour, which is in February. Late, late February, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it should be. Well, um, that, that must mean that supercars can't have a month gap between races. How will they ever organize something? <laughs> <laughs> no, to anyway. make it to make you feel better, um, I think they're going to move away from the Bathurst opener. I think they're actually going to go to Sydney, make the Super Night being the season opener. It's it's you can't do much when uh, New South Wales want to host a round and you've only got two tracks. True, very true. Um, I hope did- in a couple of years' time that uh, that Roma track in Queensland will be up and running. Hopefully. No, not Queensland. Sorry, Newcastle. Yeah, hopefully. Um, but uh, until then, probably most likely Sydney. Uh, and last but not least, Chaz Mostert welcomes a baby girl uh, after the Grand Prix. So congratulations to him and Rian. I believe that's her name. I do apologise. Just that. quickly, they they deserve an extra credit because I don't know if you know, but this isn't their first child. Yeah, they've actually had a a child before that unfortunately didn't survive and passed away. So. Hmm. Look, my I've personally had that in my family too, where the first baby hasn't lived and the second baby, like my my cousin. So, um, yeah, that hit home a little bit. So, congratulations to them, hundred percent. Yeah, no, it's 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 amazing um, that they've uh, Everly Rose. That's her name. So, a beautiful baby girl, hmm. um, little baby Mostert, maybe a future future driver there. Who knows. I just hope they like dye her hair in multiple colors every oh, week. Yeah. Go with the chazzy glasses on, surely. Oh, that will cover her face. 
Yeah, <laughs> Mission literally. The big... Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> but no, congrats to you guys. That's awesome. Uh, really happy for you guys there. Uh, so that's all the news. Let's get straight into what to expect for the weekend. So, oh, sorry if that was loud. Um, Topor, obviously, uh, yeah, racing. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, racing at Topor Motorsport Park, located uh, in uh, New Zealand. We've got a, uh, roughly, we've got, we've got 14 uh, corners. It's a soft tyre round. It's, uh, it's a 400 kilometre round as well, which means to. <laughs> Bless you. Um, <laughs> I just saw your I face. <laughs> That's going to be in the edit. Um, <laughs> uh, we've got I two 200k races, like uh, which is going to be two 60 lap races. Expect higher tyre deck. Um, tyres are going to be eaten for sure. Uh, we've got 75% of the lap turning oh. uh, with an average speed of 145 kilometres an hour. Uh, and we're looking at a potential two-stop race uh, with a critical fuel stop on lap 15 and a critical tyre lap, top lap tyre stop on lap 40. So um, that'll be interesting done your homework. to see. Yeah, well, I had, uh, Supercars put up a chart, which was nice of them um, regarding that. Telling them it'll be wrong, though. Probably, so <laughs> I do apologise for the misinform- <laughs> misinformation. But uh, yes. let's get into the schedule, the schedule, Alex. Schedule. Yeah, so yes, take know. it away, Alex. Well, I've done mine in Sydney time. You've done it in New Zealand time. Mm. Bit of a difference. Because um, I assume most of our listeners would be from the uh, East Coast. Yes. Um, so I started on Friday with 10.55 a.m. So these are all very early, by the way, because of the time difference. <laughs> um, the Supercars have hosted a 90-minute session. The only practice that this is the first week end of the new format, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so what's going to happen is is um, one practice cause, session because per- originally Perth and Tasmania was going to be the same as well, I believe. But they've mm. d- see Topo is still going to be ninety minutes, but the rest of the of those events there are going to be sixty minutes on mm-hmm. Friday and two twenty minute practice sessions Saturday Sunday, like one each. Yeah. Okay. Instead, so, so this one's very unique. Yeah. So it's it's for the fans. That's what they say. That's why they changed. Oh, so that. they did a very long practice session just because it is a brand new track. So yeah, pretty much. Um, um, but it's the only I practice totally they've got, it. though. I, yeah, I kind of think there should be one on at least Saturday, like a twenty-minute one, even. Yeah, even a half an hour, something like that. But yeah, yeah it does not. It's, uh, Friday is only the one session. Yeah. So and, you're on Friday, you only get an hour and a half. Yeah, and in New Zealand, that starts at twelve fifty-five local time. Yep. Um, Saturday now we got qualifying. It's at eight twenty a.m. Sydney time, New Zealand. What's New Zealand time? Oh, sorry, sorry. I was uh, ten twenty. <laughs> sorry, I, ten twenty. I was, <laughs> I was such Hang on. So they and are they two hours in front? Yeah, about that, roughly. Okay. Um, the top ten shootout uh, is going to be at ten a.m. Sydney time, which is twelve twenty-five local. Cool. Um, and then race seven of the year, the first round, the first race of the round, is at one o five p.m. and it's sixty laps, as Daniel said, which is three o five local time too. Cool. Um, we don't know how long that'll go for, but sixty laps worth of running. Yeah. Uh, time certain, obviously. Um, qualifying on Sunday for the Sunday race is at eight forty five. Sydney time. Which is 10.45 local. Hang on. How are some of these two hours and some of these two and a half hours? I don't know. Let's just go with it. I'm using Team 18's <laughs> stuff. It would be better Anywho. if Supercars actually had an option to fix that because at the moment it's stuck on local track, local viewer time. Yeah, which hours are completely even different because they're from South Australia. So. Yeah, there you go. Um. Yeah, messed up. Um... Then top 10 shootout is at 10.25 a.m. Sydney time. Uh, which is 12.25. Roughly. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last race of the weekend, which is race eight of the year, is at 1.05 p.m. Which is 3.05. Ish. So, um, in terms... So that, that made no sense. Look, it, at least you know what's going to be Some on the day. Some of two and a half hours. <laughs> At least you know if what's you go going to be roughly on. around the time. It should be the one. Yeah, yeah. You're either going to be half an hour early or right on time. 
Exactly. Just <laughs> keep the TV on all day. <laughs> Yeah, um, and if you go into the top or roughly go around those times. Exactly, and in terms of support categories for the weekend, we've got New Zealand Formula Ford Championship, uh, the New Zealand Toyota 86 Series, uh, Central Muscle Cars, and last but not least, the Porsche Carrera Cup. Um, so they, Only that's... one of those are from Australia. Yep, and uh, so that's, that's mine. Yeah, so epic weekend of racing coming up for sure. Also, by the way, for everyone in Australia, check out F- Formula One as well. That's coming up as well. So definitely mm. a massive weekend of racing. Uh, the weather-wise, it's Friday, Saturday is maybe a potential shower, um, just to add to things. But Sunday is looking to be nice and sunny, or nice and dry at cool. least. So I uh, might see two different races. Hopefully um, the tyre deck doesn't affect the race too much. I, hopefully it doesn't ruin the race, like we said with the Grand Prix. But obviously, there's a lot more turning this time around. Mm. So it'll be really yeah, interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting because you look at the uh, some vision of the track and it's very twisty. And mm. I I have a really bad feeling that there's nothing much overtaking. Yeah. You know, it's not like the F1 here has DRS and stuff. You can use it to his binders. There's going to be a lot of following, I think. So qualifying, very, very crucial. Mm. Well, someone made a good point, I think. I can't remember where I saw it, but apparently it's, it reminds them of a hybrid of Sydney and Darwin. Sort yeah, of. which um, don't which have see. that many other taking points. No, there's a lot of, especially turn one. Uh, turn one, actually, lap one is going to be interesting. It's a, a 70k yes. an hour corner. Um, yeah. So I'm curious to see. Oh, I just hope it's not going to be boring. We've seen I don't Sydney think it'll be boring. Year. I just, I think well, supercars, you know, they're, they're more. Uh, like you can hit, you know, what's what I'm looking for? Strong, I guess. Yeah. You know, you can bump other drivers and, you know, there'll be dives and mm. mistakes and spins and crashes and whatnot. Mm. So, yeah, I don't think it'll be boring. I just think it'll be a bit of a hard track to pass. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, let's just hope, you know, they're a bit lenient on the rules. With yeah. stuff, um, hopefully drivers do have a crack at at, at moves. Um, yes, I think there'll be no shortage of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And with supercars, they'll be fine. <laughs> exactly. And uh, with that being said, let's get into the predictions for uh, Topol. Yeah, I've only I've only written two down, and because it's a brand new track, I can't say yeah. I think this is going to happen because yeah. Of, um. I've written though that I think Brody will get a top five result straight off the bat, mm. um, and I've written down podium question mark. I kind of hope he does it just to shove it in someone's face. Mm. <laughs> Pete Adderton. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah, um, and then I I hope that a New Zealand driver wins. And to be honest, that's probably either going to be Richard Stanaway or Matt Payne. Yeah, nice. No, I reckon so, it'll probably be more Matt Payne than Richie. No, nothing against Richie, I, I reckon. Agreed, but I think Richie's got a lot of experience around Topol, from what I've read. Has he? I haven't, to be honest. I think I more than Matt Payne. Payne. Okay. Well, he's also older. Mm. And I think he grew up there a lot more than Matt did, because Matt did a lot of um, overseas stuff. Also, mm. did Richie, I guess. But. Richie, well, Richie would, well, he was part of GP2, so he would have. Yeah, and Matt Payne's very uh, close friends with uh, Liam Lawson. Mm. So yeah, so it'll be really interesting. Um, I'm hoping Ryan Wood. That's actually, all I wrote. Yeah, well, I'm hoping I haven't written anything, so I'm going to wing it. But I'm hoping Ryan Wood has a good result, given it's his home as well. Um, I he, forgot he's a Kiwi. And then Jackson Evans is the fourth. Jackson one. Evans is oh, one. and um, and Andre Humbrad. And Andre, yeah, yeah. So good line, a good lineup for Kiwis. Um, mm. hope, oh, in saying that, hopefully BJR have a better weekend than they've had so far in the year. They've struggled heaps, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I reckon, in terms of Brody, I reckon, yeah, maybe a top five as well. Maybe a top ten. We saw what the Erebus guy, based off what Erebus has done, they've got any result between from um, fifth to round to eleventh. They haven't got any lower. I don't think. Besides from, okay. besides from the retirement. That. That, um, I just remember something. Sorry, 
This is the first weekend that the live pit lane is going to be used. That is a very good point. Yeah, that's I just a, remember. Yeah, that's like, right. Hang on, because they, they, they didn't uh, use it at the Grand Prix because, you know, they were put into a car park. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have a look at it. I just remembered. Right? Yeah, what's the leaderboard? Yeah, so the, look, the, the way the pit lane is going to be set up, we've got Red Bull with Penrite. So they'll be mm-hmm. your fronts. And then we've got Team 18, Matt Stone, Erebus, Walking Shore, Tickford, Premier, uh, the Heimgartner, Fullwood, uh, the Shell V Power. Actually, in saying that, BJR is all together, aren't they? I think they are all together. Yeah, so, and then, so BJR. And then we've got Shell and then B, uh, BRT. Okay. Oh, wow, so those Shell was second to last. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a bit, that is rough, isn't it? Um, yeah, DJR. Being, the, uh, being the Ford team. <laughs> yeah, the Ford. Yeah, exactly. They're the factory team. Um, but the thing is, no. Team 18, really high yeah, up, which is great third. to see. Third, yeah. Fourth, third, yeah. Third ahead of Matt, Matt Stone. Um, but Penrite, yeah. though, that's the highest they've been. Mm. Um, so they'll be fa- – it's a fantastic – especially in the – with the, you know, the Kiwi drivers and the, we've established that. Yeah. Um, so that'll be cool. cool. But Red Bull will probably be hard to beat again, I reckon. Um, but I'm hoping there is a show. I, I do oh, – I hope um, Payne gets a podium at least. Um, hopefully one yeah. of the Penrite guys I- do. This is why I wrote down, I think, a New Zealand driver win because I think it's a track that they would have used growing up. Hmm. It's not a track that, you know, yeah, supercars have used and, you know, other drivers have actually used. So I think those five Kiwi drivers have an advantage, definitely. Hmm. Obviously, they wouldn't have driven a Gen 3 supercar around there, but, you know, any kind of knowledge is handy. Yeah, well, Jackson Evans, I'm not sure about, because some, some of them went, went over to Topora last week. To get a get some practice in, uh, Jackson Evans drove one of those, you know, the New Zealand supercars that they have. The oh the yeah, the, yeah, 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 um, yeah. So that's a good. Well, Heimgartner did it too, actually, too, and uh, that's good experience. That's probably the closest they will be able to get. Um, I think um, uh, Macaulay Jones drove an eighty six around mm. as yeah. well. Yeah, I saw a few and things. The new line guys as but well. Look, but look, simulators exist now. Yeah. Um. Obviously, Thomas Randall has got his dream sim, literally. It is and dream. <laughs> um, yeah, literally, that's what it's called. Yeah. And he's posted videos of that years ago, so mm. he's you know ahead of ahead of schedule. <laughs> yeah. Actually, in saying that, hopefully Tickford have a good weekend as well. Um. We saw that they had a quick yeah. car. They had they both had quick cars at the Grand Prix. They just had no luck. Thomas Randall literally mm-hmm. only only had one good race. Last last time, yeah, the last race and Cam Waters. Yeah. We all know what happened with his car, um, yeah. but I'm I'm hoping hopefully they do do uh, do well. But uh, yeah, I'd be curious to see uh, how Brody goes though. That's the big big story. Um, yeah, that's the biggest point. Thing. So we'll have to see uh, what happens. Let us know uh, in the comments below um, your predictions, and if you're listening on Spotify, feel free to me- um, check out our socials and stuff to let us know. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but. Uh, any final thoughts, Alex, before we uh, wrap this up? I know you've got a, an announcement you want to make. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> no, nah, that's, uh, yeah, there you go. Should be, should be a good, good weekend. But uh, where will uh, you be? Of which, <laughs> I will be, um, for low. those who know the high, it's not, it's not that massive. Oh. Um, the High Tech Oil Super Series is starting this year for 2024, I believe. Um, well, at least the Formula RX-8s are going to be there. And that's all I'm really interested in because I will be part of the Slipstream Autosport team there following um, Ivan, who, if you didn't see, was in our big announcement that we had last week of uh, the two forces that I'm a part of joining together. Um, so I'll be there floating around all weekend uh, in the garage of number 89, uh, well, Formula RX-8, I guess, Mazda M- F- MX-5 RX-8. I keep going eye racing. I keep. I always think MX Five before RX Eight. So yeah, I'll be there all weekend. Um, floating around. If you see me, say hi. Um, there's gonna be a lot of content, so I'll be pretty much filming the whole weekend. <laughs> yeah, so as well as yelling in Ivan's ear, saying he's terrible. 
but that's all right. And sneaking um, into his car <laughs> when he's not looking. Yeah, hopefully sneak in for a seat. But, I hope um, you didn't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, but, so far it's been good news. that had a test day and he went uh, very well. So, yeah, from no, what I'm told. But, yeah, I'll be there Friday and uh, Saturday. He's got a race that starts at quarter past nine or something. Morning or night? It's night. Yeah, that'd be fun. There's a race that starts just before 10. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, not his, but other series. It's a mm. very packed schedule. So there's going to be Trans Ams there. There's going to be some classic V8s, um, um, what's a lot of XLs as well. A few categories I haven't really heard of before, but mm. that's okay. Um, be a very action packed weekend. Yeah, well, um, it's, it's a big series. Of course, it's very similar to the Shannon Speed Series, which happened last week. Yeah, um, a little less coverage, like, but still, they're on. They're going to be on KO this weekend. Yeah. I don't know if the Formula RX Eight race itself is going to be on KO, because um, there is a bit of a time uh, that they've got. Mm. Um, but that and SBS is done as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, no. So, if that sounds like something you're interested in, I highly recommend checking it out. If you're in Sydney, I highly recommend going there. Um, it's going to be a great weekend of racing overall, and also like and like Alex said, if you see him. Make sure you say hi. Um, give him a high five or something. Um, yeah, he'll he'll be he'll be making a lot of footage, uh, especially for TikTok as well. Um, I'm not sure what Ivan will be doing with Slipstream. I'm sure he might be making he'll be doing something yeah, regarding that. Me. Yeah, you'll be covering that. So check out Slipstream Autosports. Sides. Yeah, so slip, check out um, our socials as well as Slipstream Autosports. All that is in the description. Um, expect some good content coming along, uh, coming the way. You know what I mean? That didn't make sense, but should be good. Should be awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> the weather looks toilet though. The weather looks not good. Yeah, well, it's going to be raining, isn't it? Or cold or something? Well, yeah. Last time we checked, it was going to be raining. I haven't checked in the last uh, couple of days, but uh, if it's anything like it said the other day, it's not going to be very good. <laughs> well, you got some so, jumpers yeah, ready bring, from the looks of it. Bring my bring my rain jacket. Yeah, good call. Yeah, Friday, Saturday it says rain. Sweet. Yeah, right. So, so you'll have fun with yeah. that. Mm. Oh, that'll be yeah. all right. Um, but, yeah, so if you want to do that, be, f- be sure to check that out. Holly recommend it. And, uh, yeah, so thanks, everyone, who has tuned in uh, to our podcast, uh, whether you're listening on Spotify or watching on YouTube. Uh, you can check out our socials down below. If you're listening on Spotify, be sure to follow and Leave a five-star rating. It helps us get out there more. Subscribe on YouTube and give us a like as well. Uh, and also give us a follow on all our socials on uh, down below, like I said. And uh, tune in for next week um, for our Topo review, our Chinese Grand Prix review, and uh, Motorsport Report, which will be covering NASCAR and most likely the Super Series as well. Um, so uh, expect a lot of more content. Like I said, Slipstream will be having content as well. So content madness coming your way. Should be good. I'll be glued to the phone all weekend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let's leave it here. Thanks, everyone, who has tuned in. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good day, wherever you're watching listening from, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Yeah.